What's up? It's Anna. I've never been this nervous filming a video before, but today I want to film this video because I wanted to tell my story. First, I wanted to say that nothing serious happened to me because I don't want anyone to think that I'm trying to exaggerate anything or make this up to be something bigger than what it was. I just want to share my experience and tell my story in hope that other people that may come across this video are not as naive as I was. So that's why I'm making this video. So I'm gonna be talking about what happened when I was living in California and why I left. What happened is why I left, but well, you understand when I tell the story, so. And throughout the video, I'm gonna be putting up some pictures that I have on my Instagram. Just to give you guys some context to what I'm talking about, I guess uh, we can start with the, the timeline. It all happened in 2013 when I was living in, in Huntington Beach for college. So I lived there from August to December. I had graduated high school in December of 2012. I left for college in August of 2013. I decided to go to California and the college that I chose was Orange Coast College. The major that I was studying was fashion merchandising. I'm gonna throw some pictures of like a project that I made and I think some magazines that I bought for like a, that project that I made. But I loved fashion at the time. I still do but like in a different way. But I'm a film major now. That's what I study currently. Well, I dropped out for like the current semester, but I'm gonna continue next semester, but still, whatever. I'm going on a tangent. Before I moved there, I had a very like sheltered and kind of spoiled life, I guess. So when I got there, I had to like learn how to do a lot of things for the first time, like laundry. So like I faced a lot of challenges like that when I got there at first. Now this is something that I want to talk about before I tell you the story because it's important for the context, but I've been a kind of heavy drinker since like 14, 15 until like last year kind of. Now I'm I kind of like calmed down in that department, but when I was a teenager I used to drink a lot. So when I turned 18, that's when it became legal for me to drink in my country. I had just a month before I had to leave for college in another country. So I only had like a month to party with my friends before I had to leave. And I thought that I was going to be gone for actually four years. So I wanted to like party as much as I could in that one month. So I really went hard on alcohol, which I don't recommend and like I'm not gonna say that I regret because I had a lot of fun, but there was one night that like I ended up in a hospital so like I do have some regrets. But my point is that when I got to the US, the age drinking limit or age is 21. So when I got there, I was really used to like going out to bars and parties and drinking and whenever and wherever I want. So to me, that was kind of like the biggest culture shock that I had. And it wasn't hard for me in the beginning because when I got there, I was just so happy that I was there to begin with that I didn't really care if like if I could drink or not, like whatever, who cares, like I'm here, you know? But like when I got there, I knew that I was not gonna be able to do that. Like I got, I, I put it in my mind that I was not gonna do that because I was really scared of getting caught and getting deported. Like I didn't wanna put that in jeopardy, you know? I'm not that stupid. There, I didn't really have friends. To be honest, like I had actually two friends that were really good friends and one of them I talked to them to this day and I love her but I didn't really care about that social life because I really just loved being there for my schoolwork you know okay now I'm gonna tell you how I actually got there and I'll try to keep this short I took all the tests that I had to take like the SATs and all the other tests that you have to take in the US I took it here and then I applied to six different schools and I 
I think I got into like three or four, I don't remember. So my parents decided that since the school didn't have dorms, they wanted me to stay with a family for at least like a semester or a year. And that's how I ended up staying with the family that I did. We did work with a company that helped us get to that family. So we thought that everything was safe and everything was gonna go fine. And boy were we f***ing wrong. <laughs> So we had like some information about the family, we knew that it was a couple and we had like pictures of the house and everything and we knew what they did for a job but that's basically all that we knew. So initially when I traveled there my mom went with me and she stayed with me for a week but she actually stayed in a hotel, she didn't stay with me at the house. Also something that I'm gonna talk about later is that I was renting a room in their house. It wasn't like a family exchange program where like they had to take care of me or they were in charge of me or anything like that. Like I had total freedom in their house to like come and go and there was another girl that lived there too and she got there before me so she kind of already knew them and I'm not gonna say her name but she was from China and she was one year older than me so she was 19 at the time and I'm gonna be talking about something that happened to her later so let's just move on so when me and my mom first got to the house I was really nervous but I was super excited because I had been dreaming of living in the US for like a really long time and so far everything had met all of my expectations even a drive from LAX but then me and my mom were waiting for them to open the door and when they opened the door they had a baby in their lap and we didn't know that they had a baby so like if I could choose at the time to not live with a baby I would have you know what I mean it's like you know what I mean but after I met them and after I lived with the baby for like a couple of months I actually grown to like the baby quite a bit and he was really cute and he was not that bad I just hadn't signed up for that so I didn't really like the surprise at the time but whatever but we met the couple and they were really really nice they were both in their 30s he was a professor in another college in Orange County and she was a part-time tutor in the same college that I went to and we got along great for like the first couple of months that I was there and honestly my room was nicer than the pictures that I got it was so beautiful I'm gonna show you a picture of the view that I had it's I really miss that <laughs> a lot then it all kind of took a hard turn for the sake of their privacy and to make it easier to tell the story i'm gonna give them fake names and i'm gonna call the wife karen <laughs> and the husband chad i started to get really really close to both of them individually and as a couple but what was a really big thing and it wasn't weird but it's very important to the story is that they would take turns taking care of the baby and staying home so whenever she was home taking care of the baby he was working and whenever he was home taking care of the baby she was working so there were a lot of times where I was alone at home with just her or alone at home with just him and the baby of course except at night like around after 7 or 8 p.m. where we would all get together for dinner so I would often talk to both of them alone and I don't remember which one of them told me that Chad was an alcoholic but he had been sober for three years at the time now Chad was like a really laid-back kind of guy like made jokes of everything and Karen was not like she was a bit of a Karen but like she was funny and she was a very nice person don't get me wrong like, loved her but she was Canadian and she followed the rules and she made sure that everyone around her followed the rules too like all the time just very strict so everything was good my relationship with them was good we were even watching the last season of breaking bad together at the time until one day when karen was at work and chad asked me if i wanted to have some beers and i got confused because like apparently he doesn't drink and he knows that I can't drink so you know like I was like so you're gonna buy me beer does your wife know that is she okay with that like in my mind I was like there's no fucking way that your wife would be okay with you buying me beer ever but 
my mind at the time, I was like two months dry and not drinking and I really wanted a beer, man. I really did. And I was really fucking naive. Like really naive. I thought I wasn't. My god, I thought I wasn't. And I really didn't see anything to it. Like I thought he was just like a friend because at the time I had older friends and I had friends that were his age, that were 30 years old and weren't, you know, malicious towards me but he was being malicious and I didn't see it it's not my fault but I didn't see it in my eyes, I never thought that person that I knew would ever do anything to hurt me I saw him as a parental figure at the time like, I lived in his house with his wife and his child so... I in my mind, I could never imagine a scenario that something like that would happen. Well, life is full of surprises. Sometimes they're not so good. So he asked me what my favorite beer was and I told him the name of the beer that I wanted to try the most, which was Blue Moon, which today is my favorite beer. And then he said he was gonna buy me a bottle of that and a bottle of the beer that was his favorite when he used to drink. And I thought he was gonna buy me like a long neck beer, you know, like a small one. But I don't know if it was the next day or like a couple of days later when again his wife was at work, he got home and he was like, hey, I got the beers. And he got there with like a litter or two litters of beer and I was like, okay, we having a ball. <laughs> because I was not expecting that. I was happy, but then again, I didn't see the whole, you know, malicious part behind it because of course he wanted to get me more drunk. And today that I see the whole like evil behind it, I want to scream to young me like it's a trap, it's a trap, but I can't. So I started drinking and we were talking about like regular things that we talked about every day and the conversation wasn't weird so I thought that everything was fine and then he asked me if I wanted to go get a burger after I finished drinking the beers which at the time I didn't think it was weird again because him and his wife would take me all the time to get burgers around town in different places to just try different burgers because we kind of bonded over that but this time it was different because he asked me to go to a specific place that his wife didn't like so when he asked me to go to that place I did think it was weird but I thought about it for a second and then I was like nah and I was like okay let's go get a burger but the gag is he wanted to go get burgers and then go and pick her up from work which I don't know what he was thinking was gonna happen like with me and then picking up his wife from work like I don't know what he was thinking but then again, men. Now, I was worried she was gonna notice that I was drunk. So I finished the beers and we went to the restaurant with the baby, might I add. He was taking care of the baby this whole time. He was supposed to be taking care of the baby, but he was doing whatever the f he was doing. So we get to the burger place, we order, and then I have to say that I make one mistake. It was from being naive and like I said it as a joke. I mean, I never thought that anything would ever happen to this man, like I didn't see him as anything in my mind. So when I said it, like I said it, like I would say it to like a relative to like, I don't know, you know? Anyway, so unfortunately I said, this is my first real American date. It was clearly a joke. And he laughed at the time, like he really seemed like he didn't take it seriously. So I was like, okay, fine, right? So we finished dinner, everything was fine, we go back to the car, he put the baby in the back, we both go and sit in the front seats, and then, you know, anyone that has gone through anything similar to this, you're gonna know what I mean. You tell yourself that like you're over it and like you're okay to talk about it, but every time you tell your story, like it hurts. A little bit in that same spot you know like it's been seven years and I've 
Like I blocked a lot of stuff out, but that like that night I remember perfectly. Like those months that I lived there were one of the best times of my life and worse because of what happened. But at the same time, like I had such good times and I can't remember the good times because I suppressed memories because of the bad times that I had. And that sucks. Like that f***ing sucks that I can't have that back. I can never have that back. I'm grateful that he never touched me, thank God, but I lost a lot. So we were both in the front seat and he put his arm around my seat, not me. Like I said, he didn't touch me. And then he looked at me very serious and he said, I don't remember word for word, but it was something like, so so gross. So there's something that always happens in the end of a date. And when he said that, like, I don't know, some... The first, the only thing that I could think of doing was laughing really hard. <laughs> like nervous laughter, you know? When you don't know what to say, what to think what to do, I was like, I'm trapped in this car with this man that I thought I knew, I didn't know at the time if he was gonna do anything, thank god he didn't, he didn't do anything, because I laughed in his face, so he didn't act on it. But when I laughed, I got more scared because I thought that by me laughing at him, he was gonna get angry and maybe, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know, do something, I don't know what. But thank God he... His face just got really angry and he turned around, he started the car, he turned on the radio and we drove off and I was afraid that we were gonna go meet his wife and she was gonna realize that something had happened and she was gonna say something and, or he was gonna say something or I don't know. The baby was gonna say something. I don't fucking know, man. I was just terrified. But I was really scared in that car. I was scared about what was gonna happen. But she got in and she turned around and she said, So how was dinner? That's when I realized that he had told her that he was going to take me out for dinner. And that's when I got really <laughs> looking confused and I just said it was fine, the food was good, something like that and then I don't remember anything else from that night. I don't remember the ride home, I just remembered that I got home, I went straight to my room and I f***ing locked my door and I cried. That's it. And from that day on I never was in my room with my door unlocked again ever i know what it feels like to feel unsafe in your own house or what's supposed to be your your home right i was fortunate to have only felt that for a couple of months and the fact that my situation was temporary and that that man never touched me and that nothing serious did nothing actually happened and that my trauma is only psychological not saying that it's nothing but definitely it could be a lot worse and the reason that I wanted to tell this story is to bring light to other stories like this that aren't taking as 
seriously and should be because it really fucks up your mental health and women shouldn't be in this position anymore we shouldn't be feeling like this through millions of men and women go through physical and psychological violence daily so if you know anyone please help them it took me a long time to be able to feel safe again but i do today and i'm really proud of that but it really took me a long time to be able to trust men again in general uh, i'm not sure if i really do still but i try my best but y'all should try your best too you should try harder like you're slacking honestly like spice up your game now a lot of people ask me why I didn't leave right after that happened. Well, there are a few reasons. The first and the most important one, the most relevant one, is that I wasn't ready to tell anyone about what had happened. And the second reason is because if I told anyone, his wife would know. And I really didn't want her to know because I didn't want to break her heart. I think, I'm pretty sure, they're still together. I know they had a second child. I know he started drinking again pretty much after I left. And I'm just really sad for her. So that's, that's why I stayed uh, as long as I did. And the third reason is because I had started a semester at the college that I did and I liked my classes. As much as it pained me living there, I love my school. And I was having the time of my life at the same time that I was having the worst time of my life. So it was weird because I didn't want it to end, but at the same time I couldn't stay there anymore. But a few weeks before my semester was ending, I contacted my mom and I said that I wanted to go home. She asked why and then I told her and then she wanted me to go home immediately. And I said no. And she wanted me to explain to her why I wanted to stay. And then I did. I finished all of my classes. And right when I finished, I left. And I left without saying anything. And this is also the same reason why I stopped making videos seven years ago as well. When I got back home, I fell into a very dark depression. So that's why I stopped making videos as well. Now I want to talk about that other girl that lived with me. Like the night before I left, I went into her room to say goodbye and I saw that she was drinking a bottle of champagne and I asked her, where did you get that? And she said, Chad bought it for me. <sighs> so immediately I was like, fuck no he's gonna do the same thing to her and before i left i told her and i told her please be careful before anything happens to you too because he was doing exactly the same thing to her and if i was naive man she was oh god i was so scared for that girl i know that she ended up moving but she never told me if something happened or not so i guess i'll never know but i hope nothing happened and i hope truly hope that she's okay but if i try to look at it from a good angle i grew so strong from all of this and i learned so much about the world and myself and i wouldn't be who i am today if it wasn't for this experience it's not one of the best ones that i had but i'm grateful for everything that happened in my life because it led me to here you know and i'm so glad that i finally told this story i've been wanting to tell this story for a while so i just hope that i can help anyone learn from my mistakes and whatever i did 
in my life. Not mistakes, but just my experience. I just hope that you learn something or take anything from this. And if you need anyone to talk to or if you need help, I'm here. You can reach me. Talk to me in any social media. They're linked down below. I'm happy if you made it to the end of this video. I don't know how many of you did, but I appreciate all of you. Thank you so much for watching and I guess I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys. Sometimes the light's all shining on me Other times I can barely see